Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, today we have with us a special guest, uh, Mr. N.K. Singh, Member of Parliament from JDU Bihar, a former Member Planning Commission and a former Secretary Finance. Uh, Mr. N.K. Singh recently uh, kicked off uh, an interesting debate on how central funding uh, should be distributed to states uh, on the basis of per capita income uh, rather than uh, some of the age-old methods uh, which, which seem uh, outdated. Uh, welcome to our show, Mr. N.K. Singh. Now, you have been uh, advising uh, uh, the Chief Minister of Bihar, Nitish Kumar, and in that context, you raised this very important issue in Parliament on how central funds should be uh, disbursed to the states um, on, a, on a completely uh, a different basis. Uh, and you, you cited uh, per capita income uh, of states as an important parameter. It, it, it seems to have got some traction. Now, I want to understand uh, where is uh, this whole debate now? Well, I think that, um, uh, you know, this is an issue which has been engaging Bihar's attention uh, for, for several years. Uh, if you recall currently, the uh, nomenclature special category status, which was a part of the recommendations of the fourth finance commission, and thereafter the Gadgil formula was tweaked, three states began by getting the special category status, which means more liberal devolution of funds. Later on, uh, other states were added. Currently, 11 states are getting the benefits of the special Mostly category. Mostly northeastern state. states and... Uh, and Himachal yeah. and Uttaranchal, yeah. based on the triple criteria mm -hmm. of sparse population, uh, hilly terrain, and international borders. And this was in the 1960s, right? It began with the Fourth Finance Commission, as I said. Mm -hmm. uh, thereafter, uh, really historically speaking, uh, Bihar has really argued uh, uh, for several years now mm -hmm. Is long, uh, had a campaign, we had culminated in a rally, where basically what we have argued is that this method and methodology of looking at the special category status was flawed because uh, in terms of multiple other development parameters, per capita income was one, one yeah. but there are several other multiple parameters in terms of human resource development, in terms of per capita consumption of electricity, in terms of the density of roads, or density of, of rail penetration, on all these multiple parameters, we need to really approach it on which are the states and how far away are they from the national mean and national averages, and enabling policies which would enable them to approximate the national average. Such an approach would be more just, more rational also. It would be more appropriate, yeah. and it would really fulfill one of the key objectives of the 12th five-year plan. It in, indeed, it was also in the 11th five-year plan sure. to really bridge growing regional inequality and enable states which have not part of the mainstream. I'm um, take for instance Bihar's example, which you which you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Bihar's contribution to the national GDP is a meager 2.8 percent when it does have over 2.8 uh, percent when it does have over 8 percent mm -hmm. of the total population. So legitimately, mm -hmm. Bihar's contribution to the national GDP should be 8 to 9 percent if you want to be a net contributor to the national GDP mm -hmm. and not 2.8 percent. So you need a different way in which methodologies and policies need to be devised. Okay. Uh, now, in what way? Uh, uh, can uh, say states like Orissa, Bihar, and some others who are way below the national average uh, can say come together and make out a case before the centre. Uh, because Nitish Kumar uh, a fortnight ago did say, uh, mention Orissa and West Bengal in the context of some of the states coming together. I is there some sort of uh, a joint kind of uh, petition uh, one can foresee coming in this respect? We're not talking really formally of a concert of the willing okay. or the concert by the disadvantaged or those who have not been so privileged. But you did mention uh, that all states, which are below the national average and multiple development parameters, have therefore also something at stake in case the methodology and approach was revised. And therefore, in that sense, what the economic survey outlines, what the finance minister's budget speech mentions, is something which is politically neutral. It is neutral because it emanates from the basic philosophy that states which are far below national averages on accepted multiple development parameters need a special approach in enabling them to reach the national average. And is it also true that some of the 
uh, special category states as they are currently uh, uh, designated, their per capita income is uh, quite above the national average also, many of them? Yes, it is. And therefore, I think it proves two points. First, that the benefits that were given, the approach of the special category states has worked. It has worked in terms of giving them a much higher per capita income, much higher levels of performance on human development index, and the tax breaks which have been given has fostered industrialization, at least in some states, particularly Uttarakhand and in terms of Himachal, Himachal than yeah. some of the other states have really. So the approach has worked, but we need now a different approach and a different methodology. Do you expect a a comprehensive review, review of uh, this entire uh, process uh, of determining which states really deserve more attention uh, in terms of uh, central funding, more flexibility, as opposed to the current lot of special category states? Well, apart from whatever the finance minister said, which was quite positive in response to a supplementary of my question, which I had asked in December, the economic survey uh, which was presented to parliament outlines the rationale, and this is reflected in the finance minister's budget speech, which is exactly this, that the different approach must emanate from a broad recognition that the old parameters and the old approach may have served a purpose, but we now need to look at states ranked in terms of their performance on national averages on multiple param development parameters, and then policies which would enable them to approximate the national mean over a finite period of time. Uh, this will require, certainly, a fresh approach of uh, an, an altered development strategy of allowing regional inequality to be spotted and really enabling states which have lagged behind the national performance to come up with the national performance. For instance, as Bihar, to give you that case, has registered a spectacular rate of growth of 11.8% in the 11th plan. In fact, the Prime Minister tweeted very recently, yeah. complimenting Bihar mm -hmm. of being the fastest growing state, but notwithstanding this. But of a low base, right? Uh, notwithstanding this, yeah. if this, even if this spectacular growth rate continued, mm -hmm. it may take 25 years to reach the national average. So you therefore require a different approach, which will enable combining the benefits of good governance and development, enable Bihar to approximate the national average in a time frame and generate employment, which will prevent uh, this kind of an outward migration. Uh, you need a different approach to the development strategy than has been followed by the central government so far. Okay. Uh, we'll take a small break here. Uh, please don't go away and stay with us. Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are having a conversation with Mr. N.K. Singh, Member of Parliament from JDU, Bihar. Uh, Sir, so you were talking about, uh, very rightly, uh, the need for a, a new set of parameters to determine uh, uh, special uh, uh, status for states uh, in terms of making them catch up faster than before with the national per capita average. Now, one of the ways in which this can be done is uh, completely reviewing the way centrally sponsored schemes uh, are delivering funds to states under various heads, whether it is Manrega uh, employment schemes or whether it's education, service shiksha abhiyan or uh, national uh, rural health mission or what have you. Now, it is these schemes uh, which today, uh, they total up to about 2,37,000 crores as per my information. Uh, now, these schemes are being, uh, being implemented in very arbitrary ways where in different schemes states have to uh, bring their own share of funds, uh, again different ratio of funds. Now, how can this, uh, this whole centrally sponsored funding system be, uh, be revamped? Well, I think I have two broad observations to make uh, on this. It's an important issue. First, I think that the entire approach of centrally sponsored schemes is an erosion of federal autonomy. Fundamentally, you're saying? Fundamentally. There are far too many centrally sponsored schemes. Um, many of them are duplicating each other. And the states and, are not consulted. And when the they states are, are not consulted when, when financial launched. obligations are cast on the states. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think that the number of centrally sponsored schemes certainly needs to be compressed into a very few schemes. They need to be rationalized. And this kind of, uh, of uh, 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 thing which cuts into the basic concepts of federal autonomy, when states which should receive the funds directly are being robbed of the funds, and what should be an entitlement-driven devolution then becomes a performance-driven revolution by the performance criteria, which is laid down by the Planning Commission. Second, 
I think when it comes to the special category status, if you alter the proportionality of the contribution of the states which receive this benefit, as compared to the resources with the central government would put, it certainly alters the resources which states have then at their disposal. They give them therefore more resources. It enables greater access to external funds consistent with the obligations of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. And therefore, I think development momentum in terms of public outlay gets a new impetus if an altered approach is followed. Currently, the centrally sponsored schemes, the, as you know, 90% uh, of the uh, contribution really comes from the, uh, uh, comes from the central government. What if you did have a different formula? It would mean that states in the typology of development matrix in which they are ranked will, would really pay, have a lesser contribution on centrally sponsored schemes compared to the contribution they are making now, which will increase the contribution of the central government, thereby enabling larger resources available with them and larger access to external funds consistent with the other fiscal obligations which they have. Mr. Singh, you've been a, I mean, now you're a member of parliament from Bihar and you are talking the language of decentralization uh, and you are indeed articulating the, the voice of the subalterns. Now, you, for many years you were at the center and you, you've seen the, the top-down approach. Now, you've been on both sides of the divide. So how can states be given choice in, in really sort of determining what schemes they need uh, going really gran granular uh, down to the you know, district level and uh, how can that help change the current centrally uh, funding system? Well, personally, uh, uh, this is really something which is inherent in our constitution. The centrally sponsored schemes per se is a, to, to that extent an aberration of the provisions of the constitution which really uh, enjoins on the finance commission to lay down the broad formula of devolution, and for the states, therefore, to be given the option on how they wish to utilize the funds which devolve upon them. These proliferation and increase in the number of centrally sponsored schemes and the resources which such schemes have begun to foreclose over a period of time is really the erosion, as I said, of their federal autonomy. A more sensible approach would be to go back to the letter and the spirit of the Constitution compress the centrally sponsored schemes, perhaps into two or three large flagship projects directly aiming at poverty alleviation with the cash transfer mechanisms which are being really conceived of and allow the states to have the flexibility in implementing them and also to ensure that the states then in their turn devolve administrative and financial powers to local panchayat institutions which are also now enjoined upon the 72nd and 73rd Amendment of the Constitution. So I think I am in favor of much greater autonomy be given to the states, much less micromanaging, far less by conditionalities the by the center, far less conditionalities and devolutions being entitlement driven as it is enjoined in the Constitution than based on performance criteria laid down by the central government. But Mr. Singh, what puzzles me is in the last 10 years or more than that, We've had this robust coalition system of politics, uh, which, 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 which has taken roots. Uh, why is it that, that all the regional parties who support the center are not able to come together? I, I see statements individually coming from Mr. Badal, or from Mr. Nitish, Nitish Kumar, or from Mr. Naveen Patnaik, or from Jayalalitha, uh, talking the same language. But I don't see uh, some sort of a concerted effort by uh, all the regional parties who indeed support any government in the center to come together and uh, sit uh, with the prime minister and uh, look at completely revamping the whole system. It, it seems to me that, that it is used by the state uh, uh, regional leaders uh, from time to time as uh, some sort of a bargaining lever, but they don't go the whole hog. Well, I, I think that if you would have really heard uh, and read about the speech of Mr. Nitish Kumar at the rally. Yeah, of course, he's the in, most in, uh, vocal in New, about in, this. In yeah. New Delhi mm -hmm. on the 17th yeah. uh, uh, of March, you would have come to the conclusion that this is exactly what he is saying. Exactly. He, yeah. he is exactly saying this mm -hmm. that you need a different approach to development, mm -hmm. that states which are really below the acceptable national average would really have a common purpose, 
and a common goal. And a common in, platform, perhaps. And a common platform, perhaps, mm. in, in course of time. I mean, this is not the revolt of the states against the centre. Yeah, yeah. But it is certainly that... It's evolutionary politics, yeah. That, that development requires a new approach. Yeah. Development strategy requires a new approach. New approach. You need to really look and look at out-of-the-box solution. Mm -hmm. And this is really the embedded mm -hmm. in the economic survey and the finance minister's speech. And indeed, therefore, one of the cardinal things that Mr. Nitish Kumar has said in the rally mm -hmm. is to seek the implementation mm -hmm. of the promise contained in the economic survey mm -hmm. and in the finance minister's speech. Do you think uh, that Nitish Kumar is also uh, parallelly talking about this to uh, with Naveen Patnaik, with Mamta Banerjee, with, with other uh, regional leaders? Uh. I think that such consultations have been informal. There is uh, right now, if you ask me, no proposal to really have a formal platform of the disadvantaged states in terms of it. But I think that is a new approach and a new strategy is adopted by the central government, which indeed the economic survey now articulates. Mm -hmm. Then clearly certain states would have a lot of commonality to share. So why can't there be a formal platform to just to discuss these issues? Well, I think the National Development Council should really be revamped. The Centre State Council needs to be revamped. One of the things on which I have consistently written is there are no credible platforms for Centre State consultations. This is the weakness in the manner in which federal polity is being run in a country. But the National Development Council is really more and more of a ceremonial body which meets really to adopt a plan, adopt a midterm appraisal. And the Centre State Council has become increasingly dis uh, dysfunctional. We need to create credible consultative mechanism for the centre and the states for enabling these kind of issues to be really discussed in a manner which is objective and not really purp purposelessly in terms of ceremonial speeches being delivered. We'll take a small break here. Please don't go away and keep watching Rajshiba Television. Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are having a very interesting conversation on, on centre-state relations uh, with uh, Mr. N.K. Singh, Member of Parliament from Bihar, representing JDU. So you were very rightly talking about an alternative center state uh, uh, mechanism uh, uh, which needs to be put in place. Now, if I'm not uh, mistaken, would you regard the, the committee which is looking at, say, GST, goods and services tax, uh, as an alternative mechanism uh, uh, between center and states uh, talking at level with each other rather than center talking down to the states. Uh, is that the kind of mechanism that you're referring to? Uh, would, would that qualify uh, in terms of uh, an alternative mechanism as you're suggesting? You know, the, the GST finance minister's group is specific to the GST. Yeah. Earlier, if you recall, there was a similar group in terms of VAT, VAT. and uh, that also came to some positive conclusion. But yeah. they were specific to a particular issue and specific to a subject. Yeah. What I really meant was a I more general... That's what I'm saying. Can this model be taken uh, to, to, to sort of encompass a whole lot of issues that you're talking about? That's what, that's what I'm saying. A GST type of uh, state finance minister's... Uh, well, I have suggested that, uh, uh, in one of my uh, budget interventions in the Rajya Sabha two years ago that the finance minister under his chairmanship could con constitute a center state economic council. Okay. And that economic council could really span on issues which go beyond specific issues or specific need-based consultative mechanism. Because I think that the center needs to take the states into confidence yeah. on the tax proposals, perhaps, which are in the offing without uh, divulging the confidentiality of it, yeah. the thinking of, of the central government on economic important policy initiatives, yeah. which casts huge financial burden on the states, yeah. where the states are not in a position to bear that burden, mm -hmm. they need to be more meaningfully consulted mm -hmm. in a formal consultative mechanism, mm -hmm. perhaps under the chairmanship of the finance minister if not the Prime Minister, yeah. which would then make this thing more ceremonial. But if it's an economic issue, mm -hmm. I would be in favour of uh, an economic council. Centre State headed, Economic Council. Centre State Economic Council, mm -hmm. headed by the Finance Minister, mm -hmm. bringing about not merely issue-based consultations, mm -hmm. but on a generic subjects which concern the economy as a whole, mm -hmm. in which states become partner in the formation and evolution and ex execution of important central government initiatives. This is what I was getting at. It's a, it's a very good idea. Now, who, 
uh, from the states, uh, the chief ministers would obviously be the, uh, be the members of this council, right? Yes, I I, 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 it can be left to the chief minister concerned. Okay. Uh, uh, but optionally, uh, he could, in, in exceptional cases, nominate his finance minister as an alternative delegate. But normally, it would be meaningful if the chief minister himself is a member of such a council. Yeah. And, and uh, what sort of issues uh, uh, could this council take up uh, on, a, on a regular basis uh, uh, in order to have a constant dialogue uh, going on between the center and the states? For instance, issues of taxes. Uh, GST is one in which it is happening, but the entire issue, for instance, of direct taxes, okay. how the issue of direct taxes are likely to impact the development matrix of the country. Okay. What kind of subsidy structure would be consistent, which combines the advantages of equitable growth uh, along with what is necessary in terms of fiscal rectitude, uh, issues of that kind, uh, issues, for instance, of where international obligations on economic issues cast uh, an important economic implication mm -hmm. for the center as a whole. This is not undercutting the rule of the executive, yeah. but it is certainly mainstreaming the states, particularly something which you said we know much earlier, mm -hmm. namely that we are in an era of coalition politics. Yeah. We are in an era in which it's, there is not only this kind of a coalition politics problems, but almost every regional party is in power in some state or the other. And I think this is therefore an altered India in which the states need to become partners in the evolution of sure. our economic strategy and certainly in its implementation. Yeah, yeah and Mr. Singh, this, it is this body, a, part, a more participative body, if it decides that, okay, these are the states which are way below the national per capita income average, and they need to be supported to catch up fast, uh, then the other states uh, who are participating in this and who are on board uh, will be res less resentful uh, as opposed to when now this, if the center says, okay, these are the states that we want uh, that they should catch up faster than the other states, then the center could be accused of uh, uh, playing favorites, uh, which could happen. Uh, because the center could have uh, the states which are genuinely sort of backward. Uh, this, the center may have, uh, uh, you know, uh, they may have them as coalition partners, right? I, so. I will not favor the approach uh, of an issue of this kind mm -hmm. being, being sent to the, uh, this economic council. Because frankly, an issue of this kind is entirely in the domain of the planning commission and in the domain of the finance ministry to consider. And I think that it will fragment decision making enormously, not enabling any consensus, particularly veto powers are given for any meaningful conclusions to come. But what I really meant was issues which have even a very wide implication on the tax policy as a whole, issues of subsidy and how are subsidies to be administered? What is the best way of administering uh, anti-poverty and poverty uh, emulation programs? Or for instance, when you take very large centrally sponsored schemes. Are the states in favor of such large centrally sponsored schemes? What kind of a meaningful consultation, for instance, has taken place on your entire subsidy mm -hmm. in terms of your Land Acquisition Act, mm -hmm. in terms of many other important legislations which are on the anvil in Parliament where states are also affected? I mean, there are plenty of issues on which a meaningful interaction between the center and the states would be exceedingly useful in strengthening our federal fabric. Sure. And how can recommendations uh, from a council such as this, what are you suggesting, uh, could be, you say, brought uh, in onto the national agenda? I mean, what could be the mechanism? You mean the recommendation could come to uh, place by the finance minister before the cabinet or before planning committee? How, how will it work? Well, if you're asking whether such a body should be advisory mm -hmm. or such a body could be empowered. Exactly, I'm getting uh, it back. Yeah. I, I think that we will need to really keep that flexible. There are issues on which it would need to be consultative and advisory, mm -hmm. but there are issues on which it could act as an empowered committee, sure. which indeed it has in the case of VAT, and indeed it proposes to in the case of the GST, mm -hmm. but there could be other issues where the consultation itself yeah. would help in the formation of a consensus, yeah. which would enable a faster enactment yeah. and an even faster implementation of policies and programs. Sure, that's what I was getting at. For instance, the GST is, is quite empowered. It's immediately the decision gets taken on board. Now, uh, the, now on subsidies, yeah. uh, 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 the consultation has to be meaningful. Yeah. It need not be empowered. 
uh, because there are, there are a whole range of other problems which are involved. So we need to have a mix between uh, advisory, consultative, and an empowered role. But I think what is important is to consider a meaningful mechanism which would enable, as I said, the strengthening of the federal fabric of India. Yeah. And Mr. Singh, on a more broader plane, I find that in India, political decentralization has happened a fair bit, uh, which is exemplified by the robust coalition politics that we have. But it has not been followed by uh, commensurate economic decentralization. Now, I, I read a, an interesting article the other day saying that in China, it's the opposite. Economic decentralization has happened. Political <laughs> hasn't happened. So how long do you think it will it take for economic decentralization to really catch up with political decentralization? Well, actually, I have also written about it, the, namely that uh, the asymmetry yeah. between uh, political decentralization, not perhaps by an act of choice, mm -hmm. but by the inevitable process in which politics has evolved. It is nobody's choice that regional sure. parties have come up. It is nobody's choice. It's the people's it's, choice. It's the people's choice, yeah, yeah. really speaking. So I think that on that, the decentralization of power to uh, uh, states and to regional parties is a political reality. I think that on economic issues, the center has held back. And I think that the center not only has held back, the center has concentration, concentrated more authority by the medium of centrally sponsored schemes, robbing states of the responsibility. In fact, I think one of the recommendations of the 13th Finance Commission, mm -hmm. and it should be considered by the 14th Finance Commission, of how the fiscal space of the states have been cramped by the center not using its own fiscal space, but on really poaching on the fiscal state of the states. And I think there are fiscal balance right. in, the, uh, in terms of the demarcation of states between center and the states must be one of the things which the 14th Finance Commission should look at. Yeah. Let's hope uh, Dr. Vedugopal Reddy, the chairman of 14th Finance Commission, takes it on board. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. N.K. Singh, uh, for talking to you. That's all we have in this uh, episode of uh, State of the Economy. We'll be back again with another edition soon. Uh, thanks for watching.